Hi, I'm Eileen with the Hanover District Library, and welcome to another installment of everyone's favorite food prep game, Can You Freeze It? Today's contestants are the zesty lemon and a half that have already survived a surprising two weeks in your refrigerator. The celery, a guy who used to be really uptight about everything and is now slowly learning to let his hair down. And your bland neighbor, cauliflower, so boring that you kind of forgot that he was even in your crisper bin. Let's see how they do on Can You Freeze It? Up first, our lemon and a half. She's zesty, she's happy, she wants to be your best friend, just don't push it, okay? Now, lemons, can you freeze it? Yes, yes you can. Lemons freeze beautifully, so do limes. Now these particular lemons have been hanging out in my fridge for over two weeks. And I used like one of them, and then uh, a half of one, and then uh, here we are. And we're starting to get brown ends on both of them. That's just a little sad. And this one's got a little bit of a dimple where it's been lying down in the fridge. Keeping them in the fridge keeps them happy longer, even though they are citrus. So what I've done is, in preparation to freeze them, I have washed them really well giving them a good old scrub with this bottle brush because it's the only scrub brush I have like that. At some point we may be eating this skin, so I want to make sure that all the particles are off. So lemons and limes freeze really well. You don't want to freeze them whole. That's just bad news. You try to do anything with them when they're frozen whole. <laughs> so chop them first. So do you want to make quarters and eighths and then use them in, you know, when you stuff poultry for the aromatics inside the body of the bird? Or do you want wheels or slices? In my case, I want slices. So I'm going to actually cut the end off first and then continue to cut slices. Oh my goodness, lemon smells so good when you cut it. And because I already have some lemon frozen in wedges, I'm going to just do slices for all of them. Normally I would make a mixture of the two. Frozen lemon slices come back great, particularly if you're putting them in drinks or if you're putting them on top of fish that you're cooking. They, uh, as wedges, they are great if you need the juice on something. Or like I said, if you're gonna stick them inside poultry and then roast the poultry, it's fabulous. What you do once you have all your slices cut is you take a sheet pan. This is just a metal sheet pan and I've got some parchment paper in it. You can use uh, wax paper, you can use aluminum foil, aluminium foil if you're British. Um, if you've got one of those fancy pants silicone baking sheets, you can use that as well. Anything that can go in the fridge, you just want to give uh, some layer between the lemon and the actual metal sheet pan. They can touch, that's okay, if you really have to, because yeah, I kind of have a lot of lemons this time, but just ideally just give them a little bit of space. They're not gonna get much bigger. So what I'm gonna do with this, now that I have them all on a sheet pan with a little teeny bit of space between each of them, is I'm going to flash freeze them. And that is an extremely fancy pants way of saying that I'm gonna stick this sheet in the freezer for three hours. But I never stick it in for just three hours. I usually stick it in overnight because seriously, three hours, I'm not gonna remember that. So tomorrow morning, I will grab these out of the freezer and I'll put them into a bag. If I can get in there. Okay. And then, once you take them out in the morning, you can just pop them into some sort of freezer safe bag. Here I have a wedge. I think that's a sixteenth of a lemon, to be honest. And I have a lime wheel, another lime wheel. I am like all out of lemon wheels. This we could easily thaw if we need to juice it. These guys actually make great ice cubes for, for whatever drink you've got going. Maybe you've got a glass of iced tea and you want to put in a little bit of lemon. The cells within the lemon have already burst because they are frozen. And so as they thaw, your lemon juice seeps out into your drink. There we go. Iced tea. Hey, you want some iced tea with lime in it because I ran out of lemon? <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Lemon. It was great to have you on the show. Now contestant number two, Celery. 
can you freeze it? Not really. Not really at all. So the problem with celery is that it is primarily water-based. And you go ahead and you freeze that, and all those cells burst, and then they come back and they are mushy. Super mushy. So, how do you deal with keeping celery for long-term storage? You may have noticed that celery can get a little uh, limp and bent out of shape after a couple of days in the fridge. Not exactly cracking here. However, what I'm going to do with this celery is I'm going to prep the whole thing to keep for hopefully as long as possible. I've got some celery that I've kept for going on two to three weeks now. So that's kind of the upper end of how long you can keep celery in the fridge if you prep it right. This curling thing happens at like two, three days. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna take the root, come up about an inch or two. I'm going to chop the whole thing off. I'm going to flip it over. If I've got any nasty pants ends, they're going off too. All this business is going away. Shoo. And then everything else in here, even the stalks with the leaves in them, I'm going to wash. Be right back after the celery takes a bath. All right. Here we are. Celery fresh from the bath. I'm going to fish out these leafy bits that aren't necessarily, or the ones that are really, really pale. Not necessarily things I want to chop and put immediately into my meals or eat as a snack. Yeah, you put you over there too. So everybody else here they are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them right now into manageable pieces, namely pieces that fit in that jar. So let's measure. All right. It's about that big. Is that right? Okay. It can be a little taller. Boom. All these pieces, except this one, which has a little bit of miffy end still. None of that business. We're not keeping you. And I'm going to Go ahead and put that in my wide mouth mason jar, which makes it really easy to uh, pull them out for snacks later. And because it's a mason jar, when it falls over on its side, it is just fun. A snack for the chef. I'll cut some more that are this length and continue filling up my mason jar. I'm not going to pack it too tight because in the next step they will uh, grow. I'm going to deal with a half size one. So maybe I'll cut this one in half and slide it in there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with water so that all of these stalks are covered with water. Hang on. Okay. Now we've got the water. All the stalks are covered except this one. Dude, seriously. I thought we already did this. Here you go. Now that you've been trimmed. So all the stalks are covered with water. What I am going to do is I'm going to get a pinch of salt and then I'm going to put a lid on this and put it in the fridge. Here's one that survived for two weeks or more, especially if you do it right when you first get the celery from the store. You'll see there, oh, uh, my jar just kind of peed on the counter. You'll see that the ends are more or less happy. They're starting to get a little bit brown on the end. I will take these pieces out of here, however many I need, chop them up for soups, chop them up for salads, chop them up for whatever casserole I'm making, anything I need. Or you can take them right out and snack on them. These are going in my fridge. These guys, well, I love using the mason jars because they're cute as all get out. Sometimes I have to use a tub. Actually, it may be easier. You know, as long as you're keeping fresh things fresh longer, you are succeeding. They don't have to be cute. It's just a bonus. It's a bonus I greatly enjoy, but hey, that's a personal preference. I do like clear though, because then people know what's in there. And if they want a snack or if you're trying to make something, then you can quickly know what you have and what you don't have. So I'm just trying to make everything flat and that it fits in here so that when I put water in there, it'll cover everything. As you take them out, either of the jar or of the tub, you may notice that the water level drops and some of the celery parts are, are now showing. Go ahead and add more water to them. Make sure that the celery stays submerged the whole time you're trying to keep it like this. Celery cannot be frozen, as we said earlier, because when you thaw it, it turns into this mushy celery tasting pulp thing. So it's not that delightfully crisp vegetable that we know. However, 
consolation prize to our contestant celery there are certain ways and reasons that you can freeze celery namely for making your own stocks and broths so i will take this core of really pale celery with all these leaves that i wasn't going to eat anyway and i will chop them so they're separate from each other chop them into some pieces oh lordy you are really tight in there together okay okay you're friendly all right let's chop this one up all right you guys are getting chopped too and then i will take a sheet pan line with some parchment paper or other substance just like we did with the lemons on goes all the leafy bits all the bits that are so white that they're kind of tasteless to you and i if we were to snack on them but they can add a little bit of oomph to stock or broth because i'm a huge fan of making stock and maybe that'll be a video someday bonus you can free stock I've got my sheet of celery and leafy doodads. I'm going to freeze this again three hours to overnight, pull it out, and then put it in some sort of freezer safe bag. Whether that's a Ziploc bag or a silicone bag, I don't really care. Whatever you've got, you can do. And then eventually I will put this into stock. So there's our consolation prize for celery. And our final contestant today, cauliflower. Humble as all get out cauliflower. Can you freeze it? Oh, thank goodness, yes you can. You can totally freeze this. And that's probably not a surprise to you if you are someone who ever shops in the frozen food section. Cauliflower is usually a staple there. However, lately, ever since there's been shelter in place orders, I've not been able to find frozen cauliflower. I've not been able to find frozen broccoli either. So I've been buying fresh produce, which there still seems to be a ton of, and freezing it like this cauliflower. This cauliflower, I thought I could eat fresh, but after, I don't know, about a half a week, I'm like, you know what? I need to freeze half of this guy. So that's what we'll do today. Got a pan of water, because before you freeze it, you need to chop into florets and blanch it. We will do that right now with our contestant, cauliflower. So I've got my cauliflower and my cutting board and my trusty sharp, sharp knife here. And I've got a pot of water ready to boil. Well, it, it's trying to boil. It's on. No salt in here. None. You don't need that right now. This is just about blanching it. If you try to freeze this entire head, I don't know what will happen to you. No one's ever been quite clear on that other than it is a very bad idea. So in the spirit of, you know not engaging in very bad ideas. I'm going to blanch my cauliflower first and cut into florets first. Like I said a minute ago, I want a half head to stay fresh for whatever sort of shenanigans I can get up to with fresh cauliflower in the coming weeks. And I want half of it to go in my freezer so that I can, you know, enjoy it beyond the point where it would have turned brown and soft and mushy and all that business. So I've cut it in half. Here we go. Here's my uh, sacrificial freezer half. I'm going to cut off all the parts that are attached to green leaves because I don't want that business. That's not parts that I eat. If you have ways of using those green leaves from cauliflower, I would be fascinated to know what they are. But I have yet to hear of one that made me think, yeah, hey, I'm going to do that. The remaining cauliflower, I'm going to give it just one more chop. And then I'm going to soak it in a bowl of water for a little bit just to try and get some of the dirt off. You too. You come along to bath time. This guy here continues to represent all the fresh cauliflower of the fridge. So he'll get wrapped back up in the bag he came in and popped away. Hopefully there's still room in the crisper for you. I hope it's not like when a sibling goes off to college and all of his younger siblings take his room because that would just be cruel right now. There you go. You got good siblings, cauliflower. You're fine. All right, here we are, fresh from the bath. Woo, towel scene. So still waiting on this to boil. I'm gonna start cutting up my cauliflower. That may be a little bit tough, that piece at the very, very, very end. But I am gonna keep a lot of the pieces that aren't quite florets that I might have chopped off if I were, I don't know, a fine dining restaurant. Because I often use cauliflower in soups that I then blend. Stem cooks and blends just as well as the flowery floret bits. So I'm keen to keep it all. Yes, I just said keen, except that piece. That piece is a little, little tough. We'll get rid of that. Man, watched pot. Okay, it's not watched pots that never boil. 
It's videoed pots that never boil. Boil faster. Fine. I'll wait. Okay, we are boiling and steaming and woo! Hi, cauliflower. In you go. You're gonna boil for three to five minutes. I'm probably gonna push it more towards the five mark. I don't know why you would do three versus five, uh, but sources on the internet are conflicting. Extra boily goodness. Boop. Oh my goodness, there are like little teeny tiny cauliflower pieces everywhere. Boop. 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 Go back under the water. Boop. Okay, so I am in the final minute of the cauliflower boiling in its pot. This is parboiling. This is blanching is what it's called. Blanching before freezing. First of all, so that it can stay longer in the freezer. When you parboil something, it lasts for several months longer. Not only is it letting it stay in the freezer longer, but it's creating something that when it comes back, it tastes more like the cauliflower that you know. Okay, so my cauliflower has been in the ice bath for a couple of minutes now, and it's now cool to the touch. Right now I'm dumping it out onto a dish towel, or a couple of dish towels, and I'm just gonna roughly dry them off. I'm not really concerned about getting them super, super, super dry, but, you know, extra water, eh. It's not gonna do you any good, it's just gonna freeze to the freezer paper, because yes, you may have thought it, and it's absolutely right. We are taking a baking sheet, this time a much larger one, lined with parchment paper, or whatever material, and we are going to put this on here and we are going to flash freeze it overnight. Why do we line these sheets? Because it is so much easier to get frozen stuff off of there, especially if you were dealing with things like cauliflower that are right now ever so slightly wet. Uh, that will freeze, the water will freeze to the pan itself and it will cause all sorts of trouble when you try to get it off the sheet in the morning, so by having this flexible layer you can just pull it off and pop it off. Whatever sort of flexible layer you can line your baking sheet with, I highly recommend it. Doesn't matter what it is, just so long as you can use it to get all these good little bits of cauliflower off of the hard surface. It's a little bit like, you know, in the Christmas story, the kid that licked the flagpole. Same deal, except cauliflower. So here we are. They're all spread out, more or less. We'll freeze them and it'll all get happy. Flash freeze these guys again. We're gonna put them in the freezer for overnight, at least three hours. Oh, come on. You are on the metal part, Dad, so no good. Thanks for joining us for another high stakes edition of everybody's favorite prep kitchen game, Can You Freeze It? Lemon and cauliflower clear winners today but celery not going home empty-handed either. We hope you've enjoyed it and that you'll join us in a future episode of Can't You Freeze It?
you freeze it. Thanks, cat. You you want to join too? <coughs> See, you should. Oh no, you like cauliflower? Which one's your pick? You really don't care? You like it's not chicken?